Hello and welcome to Axe Aloud. My guest tonight um, has essayed one of the most difficult roles in one of my favorite shows in the whole wide uh, world. Um, Kristen, um, you did 13 Reasons Why. You play the character Tony, one of my favorites in the show. Welcome to Axe Aloud and welcome to India. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, India. It's so exciting to be here with you. Tell me, you know, right in the beginning, what do you sort of know about India? Have you seen anything that's um, come out of India from Bollywood or from anything? In, in uh, Hopefully, I don't sound ignorant. I'm not very educated on the culture. I'm not very educated on the on the country. Um, I love Indian food. <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> And you yeah. know what? I, I engaged with many Indians uh, when I lived in London. I lived in London for a year and... and oh, fab, and, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we're everywhere. Yes, yes, you yeah. are. <laughs> I know you've cut your hair short, which is something that I didn't expect. But, you know, I remember when I was sort of researching about you and I was watching a lot of your interviews, I heard that your hair is like a very talked about situation. Yes, and it, you know what? It, it doesn't matter what project I'm working on. It always... Yeah. Uh, it's always a big topic of discussion with the producers and myself. Yeah, I have to I have to introduce you to one of the top stars in the country here, Karthik. Uh, he's doing very well here. Uh, he keeps saying that he his fandom is separate. His hair's fandom is an altogether different thing, which I'm sure <laughs> is the case with you as well. I think that was, especially with Tony, from season to season, yeah. his hair changed. And I think the fans yeah. either reacted well or didn't react well, you know? Yeah, yeah. I'm glad you brought up Tony and, uh, and, and 13 Reasons Why, because, I mean, I remember when I watched all four seasons, I loved them. Um, but I have realized that the kind of buzz and the kind of noise that the show created, I have never seen a show create that kind of buzz worldwide. When we were teenagers, I don't think these were topics that were discussed very much. Do you think that's because our lives as teenagers were simple or we just didn't have the guts to talk about it then? I think, yes, I think I'm 28 now. And I think when I was in high school, uh, many moons ago now, uh, and, yeah. and even in middle school, we didn't yeah, have let's social not, media. Let's not, let's not remind each other of those parts. <laughs> <laughs> right. it, yeah, uh, I don't have many, but, very, many fond memories from that part of my life. Well, you know, I was lucky in that uh, I wasn't bullied, um, at least not that much. I was picked on because I was short. And, yeah. uh, and so there were a couple of fights and verbal disagreements and things like that. But yeah. nothing to the extent that we see in this show and that we see happen in real life now. Yeah. I think there's a few reasons for that. I think when we were growing up, we didn't have social media. We didn't yeah. have the internet well, that's true. As, a, as a function the way it is yeah. now. Yeah. Um, because the internet, you know, it's funny. I'm dealing currently. I've uh, I've sort of started to engage with my fans on Twitter uh, yeah. the last couple of nights, and I've received a lot of hate and trolls. And so I'm oh starting. My God. Twitter to see... is battlefield. Yeah, it is, and I never expected yeah. that because I've always had a Twitter, but I, I never actively engaged with with comments or fans. Yeah. Um, and so I had a lot of time quarantined, and I've I've started to you know talk, and you yeah. you start to see what we discuss in our show, which is there are, you can spit into a vacuum on Twitter yeah. and, and yeah. not necessarily have to answer for your actions. And so yeah. there's a lot of cyberbullying. And I think Ooh. cyberbullying contributes to, you know, the experience that the, the high schooler now, the middle schooler now, it's things that you and I didn't have to deal with or, yeah. or maneuver. You know, I, I agree with you. I was watching something and it mentioned this part where you, you sort of deactivated your Twitter for a bit and then you came back on. This is the whole thing where you spoke about uh, the, the casting part in Disney and stuff like that. Sometimes, act, I mean, especially actors, here are very cautious about what they say because it can go wrong several ways, right? So when you speak out, is there like an underlying fear where you're like, I don't know if I'll be able to deal with the consequences that come with it? You know, I, w I was raised by, by a, a very strong man who taught me to always speak my truth. And, you know, it's, it's that thing that Captain America says, you root yourself to the ground and you stand there and you, and you yeah. fight for what you believe in, you know? Um, and so I'm never going to engage with hate, but yeah. I do believe that it's my responsibility to educate and to yeah. fight hate with love. You know, you yeah. can't fight ignorance with ignorance. That doesn't work. Um, yeah. So, I take it on the chin and, and I also understand that there are people out there who just want to rattle the cage. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, sometimes you, you might give them a spotlight and that's a, that's a mistake that I'm a yeah. that yeah. I'm I, know, I know what you mean. A light on that. It's, it's difficult because you do fear uh, as a person of color, you feel retaliation from, yeah. from, from several entities. Right. Yeah. But I think what's more important than, than, my individual career is the progression of 
all people of color, Hispanics, Blacks, Asian, Indians. Our, our whole world is made up of all of these components. And yeah. so to see 95, 96, 97% of our, our film and TV uh, dominated by one group, I think if I can do anything to sort of chip away at that, then I've been successful. And you know what? The only thing I truly care about is that my father and mother are proud of me. And uh, yeah. and I know that I make them proud when I when I talk yeah. out and, and do what I yeah. do. Tell me, you know, I mean, the whole country here in India um, is sort of like in the middle, of, especially the, the film industry here, is sort of in the middle of a conversation and a debate about uh, the concept of nepotism. One of the top actors in the country um, allegedly committed suicide. And there's like a lot of conversation around that that's going on. Um, what is the situation there in LA or in the US uh, when it comes to the, the, the fraternity there, which is acting and the whole conversation on nepotism? Is that a relevant conversation there? I don't know that I would characterize it as nepotism here. I think the the what you have to combat is getting in the room, right? Uh, yeah. Because so the example is this, you know, if you fall, if you fill out a resume and you go for a job interview, a lot of these job interviews will say, well, you need three years experience. Right. Well, how can I get three years experience if you don't give me an opportunity to work for you, right? Very true. Uh, I think that's something we struggle with over here. I think yeah. what they do tend to uh, uh, do and practice is they like to hire the same people to fill the same roles. Right. And I understand as a, as a studio or a business, you, you have to make money, right? That's the bottom line for a lot of these studios. And yeah. you know you can do that with certain people. Now, I think there's courage in stretching that that limit and you find people who are more talented than you can ever imagine who yeah. fit roles perfectly you know if, if you have that open mind before i uh, i was cast on 13 reasons it felt like i was uh screaming into a void you know just give me yeah. a chance give me a chance give me a chance um and then I, I felt incredibly fortunate to to book that job and to take on that character uh, and I still feel, if I'm being honest, I still feel like I'm, I'm fighting for my place in this industry. I believe that I, I have uh, given a performance that exhibits my talent and my dedication to Absolutely. the work. Well, thank you. Uh, but you have to convince a lot of people, you know? And yeah. so I, I still feel in many ways that I'm, I'm uh flying by the seat of my pants, you know? Yeah. Uh, it seems yeah. like I'm going from project to project, but if we're talking factually, whilst I was working on the show, other actors who were working on that show, they were recording other jobs out while they're working. And, and, uh, yeah. and after the show ended, they were given opportunities. Opportunities, my father likes to say, you know, you have to fight twice as hard to get half as far. And I think, I think that's very true. Yeah. It's sad, but it's very true. And it, I, I acknowledge that and I put my head down and I push, but sometimes it does eat away at you. You know, I have my nights where I sit down and I go, is this going to change? But yeah. the only way it's going to change is to continue to fight and continue to produce work that I believe, hopefully my directors and studios believe, and ultimately the fans believe is quality work. You know, I have to, I have to talk about the character that you played um, in 13 Reasons Why, which is Tony. And one of the best takeaways for me personally, and I think for the, for the world that watched the show was your character being gay and that not being the talking point of the show, right? I mean, it's not like a, it's not like a big deal that, um, that you're gay or like your sexuality is not the forefront of the conversation in the show. Okay, so when I was in college, one of my roommates, his name is Pierre Gonzalez. He was my he was my roommate, yeah. and uh, he he's a gay man. Yeah. And this man defied every stereotype uh, yeah. that I had ever seen, and that's part of the problem. It's what you see, right? Yeah. It's what is presented to you that that you sort of embed in you. And having met Pierre, it was very clear very early on that he was yeah. masculine, and he was all of these things that are sort of not in that caricature. Right? Yeah, yeah. And what was always driven home to me as a young actor in conservatory learning the craft is that you don't, whether you're gay or not, what you're playing is the experience of love. Yeah. And we all know what love yeah. is. And I think it was imperative for me. You know, I was obviously aware when I accepted the role that I'm not a gay man. And so I was nervous about the backlash from the community, whether or not I would do them justice and, yeah. and portray the character in a way that was respectful. Uh, and ultimately, when I sat in the room with Brian Yorkie, the showrunner, and I made that point to him, we both agreed that it, I'm not playing a gay man. I'm playing a man who happens to be gay. Yeah, There's yeah. so many other aspects to everyone's personality. Your sexuality is a very small slither 
of yeah. your, your person, your character, yeah. you know? And it's no different uh, when we portray those characters on TV and film. And one of the things I'm most proud of is that uh, Tony Padilla, for, for the most part, is one of the first uh, of those characters who sort of defies that caricature, you know, who, who wants yeah, to be cool. independent of his sexuality. Yeah. And uh, I'm yeah. very proud of that. Yeah, we put out a story asking uh, your fans to send in questions. There are a few. So the first question is from... Uh, Pavani Vijay is asking, what's your next show or movie after 13 Reasons Why? Uh, so I'm working on this project I spoke of called The Devil's yeah. Light. We're filming here in Bulgaria. Uh, I'm unsure as to when it'll come out. I mean, we're in the middle of a pandemic, so who knows? In addition to that, I am starting uh, the process of producing my own work. I have a couple of projects that I've written uh, and uh, we're getting the ball rolling on that. It's a long process, but... As yeah. you may know, as a person of color, sometimes the only way to work is to produce your own work. So uh, yeah. that's what I'm working on now. Yeah, yeah, I mean, very true. Okay, the next question is from Sweet Kasim is asking, who's your favorite co-actor in 13 Reasons Why? I think top of the list, the person that I learned the most from was Kate Walsh. I had her there the first year and I worked with her the second year. Yeah. And I think uh, I was one of the actors who worked with her the most closely that first season. Yeah. And she's a consummate professional and just has such a well of knowledge. And so... Every day on set was like going to school. Okay, now the last question is from Calvin Instagram asking, one thing you love and hate about Dylan? Uh, I love, uh, I love his, his dedication to the project. I love his spirit. He's a very kind, generous person. Uh, I don't really hate anything about him. I mean, <laughs> everybody knows he's a little neurotic sometimes. And, uh, <laughs> you know, oh, man, that's all... very close to the character that he plays, no? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so we, we all have a little bit of neurosis and, and, uh, yeah. and insecurities and all of that. But I don't hate any. He's, I, I mean, you can't hate him. He's a beautiful human being. Yeah. All right. Perfect. That, that were all the fan questions. Now we're getting to the last segment of the show, which is a little game. I will explain yeah. this to you. So what I'm going to do, it's called Indian slangs. Okay. These are very popularly used Indian slangs in English. I will okay. say the slang to you. You tell me what you think it means. Okay. Like a meat eater? I, I don't know. What well, you said it's easy. I, now I'm scared. <laughs> no, I mean, it's, a, jokes. it's an easy one. Think about it. What's like a vegetarian joke and what's like a non-vegetarian joke? What could be like different? You mean to send yeah, I mean, something? Like to send a parcel to... Yeah, yeah I mean, you're, you're, around, you're around the area. Yes. Text me or call me, right? Parcel. Oh, no, no, no. no. I mean, you, you, you were much better right before this. I'm starting with... Cheetah cock. Well, I don't know. I don't know. So, uh, uh, I will. I mean, I will tell you right in the beginning that it's not sexual. That's not what it means. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, does it have anything to do with running late? Mm, <laughs> no. No. Uh, okay. So, some, no, I don't know. If someone, it's some like it's it's pretty much like except for the cock part of it, it just means someone who cheats for their own benefit, like a like a shady oh. person. Like if I you're playing like a card much. game and like someone cheats, like that's like a like someone who's shady. Okay. 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 Thank you. I knew uh, that's that's a fun one. Yeah. Now this one's easy. What do you think non-bed jokes mean? Like a meat eater? I, I don't know. What well, you said? It's easy. I, now I'm scared. <laughs> no, I mean, it's, a, jokes. it's an easy one. Think about it. what is like a vegetarian joke and what's like a non-vegetarian joke. What could be like different? One goes for blood and the other doesn't. So maybe it's like lighthearted, uh, lighthearted joke. You. Are, I mean, listen. You are dealing with this too intensely, <laughs> Christian. I'm telling you, <laughs> it's not. It's not that difficult. You don't have to like. Don't don't go into this like deep dive in. <laughs> I mean, it's just a dirty joke, like a non bed joke. It's like a like a sexual joke or whatever. Oh, okay, so it's not PC. Okay, okay. Yeah, All right. yeah, <laughs> yeah. What do you think mugging mean? Mugging? Yeah, and I will tell you right in the beginning the the immediate one that you're going for is when you're getting robbed or whatever on the on the street. That's not what it means. No, is it uh, staring somebody down? No. Because in America, we have like a mean mug, you know, where you look oh. at somebody, you mug them. You, you, you give them like dirty eyes. Oh, oh, that's not what it means here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what does it mean? <laughs> Mugging here means like when you're, like right before an exam, if you like, like just, like if I used in the sentence, I mugged everything up without understanding anything. Like I, I just learned everything. Yeah. And without like teaching. really understanding the meaning, meaning of it. I'm sure you've mugged up before. <laughs> Yes, yes, I have. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> right. Okay. Okay. Now, the, um, see, I'm thinking all of this easy because, like, I also kind of know, like, the, the, the English meaning of it if I had to. What do you think bunking means? Sleeping with someone. Uh, no. <laughs> I was just oh. about, I was just about to say, like, not a bunk bed scenario. No. Or, like, bunking, like, 
not bunking with someone bunking okay, in so india bunking. means like like skipping class or like skipping work oh like so i'm bunking work okay, today i never would have guessed that i never yeah. would guess that <laughs> okay last <laughs> one last one is parcel it does it mean to send yeah, I mean, something like to send the parcel to yeah i mean to you're, you're around you're around the area yes text me or call me right parcel oh, no, 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 no. Okay, i mean you 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 were much better right before this <laughs> yeah it basically it basically means like ordering a takeaway like you've been to a restaurant and like if if you oh. uh, take uh, if you do like a takeaway then like you say parcel it okay now i know now i know <laughs> See, to your defense right in the beginning you said that you're not very used to or uh, uh, the culture so i i'll let you go it's fine you're educating me you're educating me yeah yeah so the next time have you ever visited india before you never right i have not and you know what i wasn't aware that i had a fan base in india I oh major like 13 reasons why it's like like a like a major fan base here i remember when i was season 4 and this came out like right after like the lockdown happened i think right and i was like great like something to watch um and i remember like the first two episodes now um, whatever and a, a best friend of mine uh she messaged me she was like because i put up a story and she was like how is it and i was like mm, whatever and then i got to like the eighth or the ninth episode i think the eighth episode and i sent her a voice note i sent it to you and i was like i was screaming i was like this is so good because i remember watching the whole high school i love i love when people are like fighting with like the school and stuff like that i'm like what well done isn't it interesting how those riots sort of independent you know the school riot in the show independent we had no idea what was going to happen the My show God. came out and all of those black lives matters protests started happening that is insane i never thought of it like that when i it, uh, maybe a week or two or that at the most 3 weeks later all of these riots in america start and then all over the world they started to reverberate and i remember yeah. thinking it's so eerie that we sort of spoke truth to power that way in the show it was i mean it wouldn't be wrong to sort of call it a catalyst considering the kind of fandom that the show has you know and the kind of influence that it has on people <laughs> all right kristen i think uh, we've kind of come to the end of the show thank you so much for coming on axelar thank you so much for talking to everyone in india i mean watching on tv but otherwise when it comes on youtube to the world anyway thank you very much ben i appreciate it thank at you. the end of axel art kristen we do something called the axel art virtual hug because that's the thing that we can do with you anyway i mean that's the only thing that i can do because you're in a different country but like with yes. people here we anyway do it because of social distancing so just extend your arms and pretend like you're giving a hug and we'll take a screen giving you all of my love i'm sending you and india all of my love yes <laughs>